Hello YouTube, this is Bowtide Media, and today I have my second installment of my 2020 year in review, in music review. Last time we talked about my top 50 singles of the year, and this video is my top 10 worst projects of the year. Albums, EPs. My idea just as a off the bat projects just means anything that's more to me at least is anything that's other than a single, anything other than a single track. So it could be a three song EP, I guess technically a double sided single, um, EPs in general, albums, mixtapes, anything like that. So a project is just a group of music, a grouping of music. So we're going to talk about pretty much just EPs and albums for this list. So let's get into it. And before we actually get into it, disclaimer, this is my top 10 worst stuff of the year. I have different opinions than you. I 100% do. So don't just hate on me for having a bad opinion. You can hate on me if I have a bad review opinion. I don't know if that makes sense. But actually, I don't care. Just hate on me if you don't like what I like. We're, <laughs> we'll get into the actual list. Um, who knows where this is gonna go. Number 10 is Leo Trix's Collapse EP. And again, might just be me, but I do not understand the appeal of these projects. Half of these tracks are just noise, and the other half are borderline vomit step, and I just don't understand the appeal for it. I listen to heavy music and stuff that sound gritty and dark like this, but I just don't get it. When the music genre is called noise, and it's just noise, why is that going to be good? I don't get it. Alien Blaster is the only song that I can really stand for a prolonged amount of time. And just please, Leo Trix, stop using your name as a sample on every single song you do. Just go Leo Trix for everything right before the drop. Sana Hello did it with the swirl and it was kind of cool back then and it was something new and unique, but now it's just like, just stop. And you're just plugging your own name every single time so people know it's your song. Uh, just please stop. Number nine is Steve Aoki's Neon Future 4. This whole project, the fourth installment of his Neon Future projects, is a complete mess. While I can't fault this project for having no theme, the entire project is stylistically just a compilation. It's like Steve Aoki told all these different artists to create a song and then he was gonna like do a little tweak or remix to the end of it and he's gonna slap his name on it and there you go. There's an entire album. You get a song with Steve Aoki, he gets work for free pretty much. It's just, I don't know if that's how it went down at all, but it definitely seems and feels like it. And there's just nothing fun about this project. Even all the individual songs are not even that good. Every producer here kind of feels like they just phoned it in and just sent Steve a track or something. It just doesn't feel right. But the biggest beef I have with it is it is 27 songs long, an hour and a half. And I know I listen to like Monster Cat compilations that are like that, but when this is phrased as an album and not a compilation, uh, it gets a little dicey. And I know he's kind of trying to do this hybrid mix between the two, but even if I were to individually look at all the songs by themselves, this album is not good. At number eight is Diplo's Diplo Presents Thomas Wesley, chapter one, Snake Oil. This is a sad concept for an album where Diplo or Thomas Wesley promises this new country kind of style of music that is actually far from it. Everything about this project is confusing and poorly executed. And I don't understand why Diplo felt like he needed to venture into country music. But the thing is, he also didn't really venture into country music. It's marketed as such and showed as much and the album art is as much and he has a ton of country music artists on here. But this is still like an electronic music album. There's really not a ton of, it's just like inspired by country music or inspired by Western stuff when it was advertised to be something entirely different. It's just bland trap beats with put on a country twang on top. It's just so bad. Here's how I imagine Diplo is uh, going to create this project. He's like, okay, I got this. We're going to do a country music album. It's going to be me making a country music album with a ton of other country music producers. And the label's like, yes. And then he goes, give me the check. And then he just phones it in. Number seven is Nonsense's Eurobass EP. And to me, this whole project, the whole Eurobass EP, sounds like it was stuck in 2014. Nonsense is usually a hit or miss for me. And this was a huge, huge miss. Like I said, it sounds like it's from 2014, both stylistically and production quality wise. It doesn't sound like it's produced in 2020. I know these guys, they can do some incredible stuff and make some fun tunes, but this whole thing is just absolute garbage. I will give it to them and they do embody the Euro bass style that they're going for, but everything just feels bland, empty and stuck in a more simple time. Number six, Muramasa, R-Y-C. This one I feel like I might get the most amount of backlash from. 
I know people generally just thought it was okay. Like it was average like six out of 10 for most people and critics, but I really did not like this one. And maybe that's because I'm a little biased. I loved his first project, his debut album, but this thing was just not anything like that at all. And I just didn't like it. Murmass went for this UK alternative feel to it rather than the nice tropical fun sounds of his first project. And maybe just because I don't love that like UK rap or UK alternative style, but to me, this was just a big mess again. And I understand that a lot of it is meant to be kind of corny and playful, and that's kind of what the genre is, but it just didn't hit well for me. And it's one of the people that I really do not relate to any part of this music. Number five is Rusko's Sauce EP. I do not understand why this thing exists. I listened to the very first song and literally laughed because I was like, this is the stupidest thing I've heard. It is just pointless and bland and there's no real musical elements to it. It doesn't feel like it's anything new. Or it's not even close to anything new. And it just feels like, it feels like I could make it in GarageBand. Maybe I'm being super harsh here, but I have no musical making experience. So maybe I shouldn't even re be reviewing this stuff. Who knows? That's a whole other topic of conversation. But this, <laughs> this EP is just so stupid. And I think he knew that too, because it like, you know, there's some album arts that look dumb and you're like, you see the album art and you're like, okay, I know this thing might actually not be the greatest in the world. This feels like one of those things again. I look at the album art, I'm like, oh no, what am I getting myself into? But maybe you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. I feel like the only way a reasonable person would enjoy or want to listen to this music is if they're on drugs. And you know, that's kind of Rusko's style, is that kind of, let's just say LSD type EDM music. So in that sense, thumbs up. But in a normal sense, thumb down. Number four is Neonix Lee Jennings EP. And again, I'm gonna revisit the idea of, I was debating a lot back and forth between whether or not I wanted to add these kind of bass music elements or these bass music projects to this list. But again, it's my personal top 10 worst project of the year. And this music just doesn't sit well with me. There's a lot that I actually really enjoy. And when you see the EPs coming up soon, there's an FN EP, there's uh, AU5, there's lots of kind of, gritty, hard-hitting music like that, that is similar to this in some capacity, but these ones are just not good. There was always the sentiment in the early days of dubstep where it sounded like Transformers having sex was dubstep or putting a, something, a metal pipe in a blending machine or something like that, and that's what it sounded like. I always thought that was kind of silly and dumb. This project is the very first time I would actually describe something like that. It is just full of screeches and high, sharp noises that are just not musically friendly. They're not something that I would want to listen to, or I don't know why a person would want to intentionally create or listen to this. It feels like it's just like you're giving tinnitus to someone as you're listening to it. And I just, I, I don't understand the appeal to this, these projects. Everything is just high pitched and screechy and annoying and just, yeah, I would stay away. Number three is ADHD by Jordan Lucas, the album that was uh, hyped up to be trash. This whole project narratively is where it kind of falters. Uh, no other project here kind of on this list has a specific narrative element throughout that they're trying to achieve and fall flat on. Like they just didn't have something. And it's okay to not want to have narrative elements or lyrical content that kind of connects with each other all throughout the project. But Jordan Lucas here on ADHD tried to do that. He tried to create some storyline throughout the whole project that made absolutely no freaking sense. The whole thing that you'd think is it's based off of, I don't know, mental disorders, ADHD, the struggles of having that or, or other disorders in, other, in some other capacity. But uh, there's like two songs about that. And the rest of it is like, look how many, uh, look, look at my luxury. Look at the money I have. Look at the women I have. Look at all this stuff. And also there's some skits in the middle where we're gonna offer a kid some drugs and we're gonna force the kid to take some drugs. What is this? I don't understand. What is the point of those skits? Is it like for the shock factor, the music shock factor? Because people like Eminem do it a lot better. And I mean, not as much recently, but just what? That shock, it's just, it's stupid and dumb. The only thing worth any of your time on this project is ISIS. And just saying that out loud, saying that ISIS is the best thing about, and, and you, like, that's just, that's weird. I don't get it. I don't understand. Where was Jordan Lucas going with this? He literally goes from one song where he's like, 
I have ADHD, here are my issues, I grew up like this, and then it's like the next one after is, he literally says in one part of the song, in one verse, I can't remember exactly what it is, but um, do not flaunt your wealth. Like people are just like, they're the worst for flaunting and all that ever. And then the, literally the next song, or like two songs later, it's like, look at all this money I have. I have a couple cars. It's just like, what? Do you understand the, the ironicness of what you're saying? I don't think he does. And number two, the runner up for the worst project of the year for me is Black Eyed Peas Translation LP. This thing isn't inherently super bad, but it's just boring and uninteresting and it's just simping to pop listeners. Like it's just trying to put out whatever is popular right now. I know that's what Black Eyed Peas does, but if you think about their older projects that people didn't love or didn't have a ton of critical success, like The End, um, those are some of those songs are classic now. They're just dance floor, fun, kind of careless songs. These are just, these are all dumb and none of these are gonna be classics in the future. Ritmo, which is the most popular one that charted to the top 100 billboard this year, it's not gonna stay there for very long. It's not memorable, it's just, yeah. They hopped on this on the Latin reggaeton hype train and it just is, no, no, not a fan at all. But what I think is the worst from this project is the last song. They kind of get rid of that whole reggaeton Latin music style and go for this acoustic little thing that's just like, we need to save the world and and we gotta come together and love each other. And it's like, okay, this is just weird. It's a weird tempo pace, whatever. But then there is a line that I'm gonna paraphrase, but I'm gonna put it up exactly here. Something along the lines of, when we can't breathe, the world can't breathe. Something along those lines. They're literally saying that they're, <laughs> they're taking the plight of the BLM movement and that whole thing and saying that essentially, this is happening because the planet can't breathe. The world is fighting back against us and killing us. And I do what? I just don't understand. You take the main moniker or the mon a moniker of the BLM movement of the idea of I can't breathe and that quote that all the substance and all the weight that is behind those words and say we can't do that because we can't breathe because we're destroying the world, the environment. Just... It feels like you're mixing and matching too many things together here that just, you're just like, oh, we'll say that and say this and say that and people will just love it because it's a happy feeling and it's a nice acoustic guitar and no, 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 no. And number one, the worst project of the year 2020 is Grey's Dark. So Grey released two sister EPs this year at the end of 2020 in Light and Dark. Get it? Light Grey, Dark Grey, haha, <laughs> kind of funny. Light was not bad. I actually did a review for it and gave it a five out of 10. It was pretty bland trap stuff, but there wasn't, there was actually some kind of nice substance in there. Uh, Dark was the darker of the two and um, was just awful and stupid. And it was worse than Light in so many capacities in so many different ways. The production style was even blander and there was just nothing happening with anything in the project. And it was just your basic trap beats that are meant for a party. And your lyrical content was also awful. Here's how bad some of their lyrical content is in this project. I'm going to take three excerpts from the songs from this EP and read them to you right now. Here they are. In a booth colored pink and blue, one bitch, two bitch, like I'm Dr. Seuss, disconnect like I'm on Zoom. What? What? Okay. Uh, you know we get it twisted like Cinnabon. Not super clever. And the worst offender of them all, the hook, the chorus uh, of this track. Yeah, you put the art in Heartless. You put the end in Friend. I don't want to see you near me. You're just a C-U-N-T. What? This really bad. That's not... That's not good lyric writing. That's not good anything. That's just awful. Why are you producing this? Why? Why? But thank you guys so much for watching. I have been Bowtie Media. Let me know what you guys think of these projects. Am I very right? Am I very wrong? You let me know what you think of these projects. Uh, and I will see you guys in another video.